and welcome to Model Kit Stuff um, and in today's video uh, we're going to be having a first impressions look at the Hobby Boss French, French Navy pre-dreadnought battleship Condorcet, the model ship that the modelling community forgot about. So this um, model kit has been out about four years now and um, it came out in 2017. Um, and to date, there is no aftermarket products whatsoever for this model sh ship kit. Um, and there's only a very small amount available for its sister ship, the Dantone. So the, the Condorcet is um, a Dantone class um, pre-dreadnought, which means that she is really interesting to look at. Um, it's before they standardised the, the the look of uh, um, ironclad battleships, so you get something that looks quite pretty. Why there is no aftermarket for this, um, I have no idea because um, this ship has five funnels and wait for this, eight. That's right, eight double barrel tonnet turrets. It's it's a beautiful ship. Um, so anyway, let's have a bit of a look at what you get with the kit. Okay, so um, you get some nice artwork on the top. It shows the um, ship steaming off into the into the distance. Um, it's a one three fifty scale. Um, we have a nice image of the ship. You'll notice that it's not wood decks. And then we've got a bit of history. And on this side, um, we get a couple of profile images, decals, and etch brass. And then there's uh, some technical information there. So Hobby Boss, um, just like Merit, is a subsidiary of Trumpeter. So what we are going to see, I suspect, is very much um, reminiscent of a Trumpeter kit. Let's take a look. Okay, so first thing out of the box is a flyer from Hobby Boss for some of their other kits which includes this kit we have an instruction manual and it would be fair to say that the box is absolutely full uh, of plastic parts ok so first out is one of the um, photo etch sheets um, and what you're getting is um, standard stuff like um, the railings, some ladders, parts for the um, funnel caps, some brackets. Um, these look like some part are look like ship chock uh, boats, ship boats chocks maybe. Um, this is an interesting. These bits here form a track on the deck for the searchlights so that you could move them around. Um, so yeah, and we have some anchor chain there. And then we have another two small, yeah, these are identical, so another two small frets of etch. Again um, we've got um, different types of ladders, some sections of railing. Um, these look like uh, yeah the lifting hooks for the cranes and some of the uh, gun doors. Now the only aftermarket etch available for the Dantone, which I guess would fit the Condorcet, 
Um, it, it's a basic etch set and it, it mainly covers these doors that you've got anyway. Uh, next we have the two hull halves. Um, the hull is 41.5 centimetres um, long. So we've got an awful lot of um, scuttles there. None of them appear to have their eyebrows above them. Uh, whether that's correct or not, I'm not sure. Um, and the hull is pretty featureless. Um, there's a couple of indentations there um, for um, the prop shafts. Um, and there's a mark there for the stabiliser. Um, yeah. Quite a lot of drilling out to be done, but um, I can't see. Oh, yeah, there's some quite heavy sink there and there. That is about it. Otherwise, it's crisp and, f and flash free. And we can see on the inside we've got some location lugs for um, some supports to strengthen the hull. Next we have sprue B, which are um, both slide moulded parts. So we have some superstructure there. Um, again, a lot of um, scuttles that will need drilling out. But we have some cabling detail. Um, quite a heavy um, slide mould seam that will need cleaning up. And there's some doors there at the back. And then um, we've got a steel deck there that seems to have, well, it looks like it's got injector pin marks, but I'm sure that can't be right. There's lots of injector pin marks on the, on the bottom. There's doors on the side and then there's Maybe they're mounting points for uh, stanchions or something. I'm sure it'll become clear. And you've got ships, boats, chocks that are already mounted in by the looks of it. So next out is sprue E and we have two of these in the box. So we can see at the ends there we've got slide moulded turrets. have some nice detail again a bit of seam clean up but the part is nice and clear small amount of flash on the inside and then we've got um, anchor which is quite nicely done some search lights or signal lamps some armament there some very nice detail on these um, ship boats interiors more armament the main main guns here are rifled out which is always nice and then some ship's boats rangefinder equipment detail moulded into that is very nice you can see the, the deck planking I think these are the bases for the for the armament um, and then you've got a little building of some type there which has got uh, some nice detail on it we have sprue K um, and we have nameplate for the stand which um, 
has the scale on. I personally don't like it when they put the scale on. I prefer just the ship's name. Um, but it has the scale on. French Navy pre-dreadnought battleship can dose it. Um, but what you can do is you can just rem sand that away the, the the scale and use one of the flag decals if you're not using them to um, to put a little imagery there just to give the whole thing some balance. Um, so we've got these two parts are um, the um, hull supports and you can see the little tab on the top is to stop the, the deck sagging so, that, so that's a nice touch. We've got the rudder which has no detail on it um, and then we've got um, two deck sections and the bow deck section. And the bow is nicely cast um, and you can see the, the, the uh, plate joints and I don't know, I'll have to do a little bit of research I don't know whether these are steel plates but or not. I suspect it's probably got an anti-slip um, covering like Cortesine or something like that, in which case all of these would be brass strips, um, which would have a nice effect. But all steel deck. Next we have Spruce C. Um, so we've got some of the funnels here, funnels with different sizes and, and different shapes. Um, we have some slide moulded buildings, one on each end of the, the sprue. And then we've got some um, vent, um, ventilation structures and a large ship's boat funnel bases some form of superstructure um, there and there and then these parts here are for mounting guns inside the hull before you put the deck on um, and they've got injection marks in and absolutely no features so there's no you know there's no doors or entry points or anything like that so uh, clearly the Condorcet used um, teleporters like in Star Trek to get into these structures bit disappointing that there is no detail whatsoever in there um, you know, it, it wouldn't have cost much to put a couple of doors on there. Anyway, through D now. This has got some um, fine detail on it. Um, you've got the um, prop shaft um, detail there. Um, what look like various booms, yard arms, the main mast stabilizers um, some little bit of small ventilator um, and then on the end we've got a slide molded um, I'm guessing that's gunnery control room or something So um, next is another two sprue E's. So in total we've got four of these, um, which are all identical. Now, that's interesting because there is different size guns. Although the, the, it's, she's got um, eight twin turrets, two of the turrets have larger guns, so there should be um, 75 millimeter and 305 um, millimeter and then 240 millimeters and then 47 millimeters I think that's right um, so now I'm looking closely at the sprues um, there's three barrels that are called out as a part nine and one that's a part eight so between the four sprues you can do the different size 
different caliber weaponry. So next we have a smaller sprue, sprue G, and there's two of these in the bag. Um, we've got a slide molded turret here. I'm guessing this is the larger turret as there's only two of them. There's quite quite a lot of sink on the top of that. Um, yeah, quite a lot of sink I can see in the light. Um, so that means you've got 10 turrets in total for an eight turreted ship. And we've got the propellers there. Uh, more ship boats detail, base of the turret. Um, what look like more yard arms or possibly booms. I think these parts are for mounting the um, armament on inside the turrets, I'm guessing. Ballards. Next we have um, a tiny sprue J. There's two of these. Um, and they seem to make up the cranes. So solid plastic cranes. So now we've got the main deck section. Um, and as we've already noted, it's full steel deck. You've got the ship's boats, chucks already moulded in. They're clearly too thick. Um, it's a real shame that no one's done some um, etch for this kit. And then you've got the bulkheads pre-moulded in. Um, at this rear part of this deck section. Interestingly, it says uh, 1350 Dantone, so you know, the very similar kits, I think. And then we have these small, what I thought were injector pin marks when I first saw them, but I think they're the location points for um, supports. Yeah, what you get is nicely moulded. Um, I think we may have may have a little bit of sink in there, not sure. Till I get some primer on that, I won't know. So the last plastic part out of the bag is the um, base, uh, which interestingly, when you look on the inside, says 1700 scale. Um, some people don't mind these, some people um, dislike them intensely. Um, I think I'm in the don't mind camp. Um, painted up nicely, making these look like wood blocks. They, they, they can look all right, um, but um, or they can be modified fairly easily. Um, but yeah, fairly fairly standard trumpeter um, base. And then the very last item out of the box, other than the instructions, is the decals which you get basically um, a flag and the the name to go on the stern and, and nothing more. So yeah, um, fairly underwhelming set of, of decals. There's no um, depth line markers or anything that you know they, they could have put on. Okay, let's have a look at the instructions. So um, a typical trumpeter style um, instruction manual. Um, so it has the legend at the bottom with the, the, the various things you may come across in the instructions. It has the kit number here, 86505. I'll take that out and look at that separately. Then we're into um, part identification. There's nothing there that's blanked out, so it looks like all parts are used. And then we start with the hull and the base. Um, 
and there's some drilling to be done in the in the two hull halves. Then we see the addition of the fairly featureless uh, gun emplacements. Absolutely bristling with guns this ship. And the steel deck goes on. Uh, again, some more drilling to be done. Then we have the bottom of the hull um, to sort out. The build sequence um, appears to make sense. Um, once we've done the underside of the hull, we're on deck fittings, outer hull fittings, more deck fittings, anchors. There's the uh, that piece of photo etch that we saw that the um, signal lamps go on, and there's some more there at the back. Um, so that was a, a quite a common thing to do at, at the end of the 19th century. Um, you think about um, HMS Warrior. They have a track like that for it for its uh, main guns, main deck guns. And then we've got um, forward superstructure bridge, more guns. Uh, we have some photo etch parts there, which will uh, really improve the look of that. The, the brackets there will look nice in photo etch quite a lot of um, legs to put under that that might be interesting to see how easy it is to keep them straight and, and position them uh, more photo etch and you can see that being placed there superstructure rear superstructure that's all oh, that's interesting yeah so, uh, sorry, that's the forward superstructure. I, I had it the wrong way around. More guns. Now, interestingly, it has you making up the main guns here, but then we're not fitting them. Um, so I prefer to build things as I need them, so I don't damage them or lose them. Um, yes. Yeah. Then we've got the mast sub-assembly going on. Ventilation and more um, structure parts. Not quite sure what that is. It's got lots of hatches in it though. Booms. Then we've got five different smokestacks. The crane actually has some photo etch parts on it which will enhance the look of those solid plastic parts that we saw. Still not going to look fantastic that though unfortunately I don't think. We'll need some clever painting to bring out the best of that. And you see the funnels go in two groups, a group of three, a group of two. Photo etch ladders and railings. And we've got photo etch railings and ladders. Um, that's um, that's for the ship's boats. And we're fitting the ship's boats, steamboats, of course. More ship's boats. And then finally the outside railing, gangway ladders, and then the last thing on is the eight twin turrets. Uh, and then we've got some external boat fittings. So um, yeah, that all makes sense in uh, almost, almost all makes sense. Um, some of the, 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 I think the only thing that looks out of place is the gun sub assembly be, um, way before you fit them. Um, but yeah. So finally, we have the um, paint guide. Um, typical of the, the trumpeter um, group. I, you know, 
Uh, I'm not a big fan of the single page colour guides. I prefer shout outs for, for paint as you go, um, like Airfix have always done and Tamiya do and, and one or two others. Um, interestingly, we've got two options for hull colours of either red or like a field green type colour. Um, but there's no explanation as to um, why there's an option. So you can't make a decision on whether you want to do that. Is it a late version, an early version? Um, is it they're just not sure? It, it doesn't tell you. So you just can make it up as you go along on that one, I guess. Um, the colour shout outs at the bottom are uh, Mr. H Hobby, Vallejo, Model Master, Tamiya, and Humbrol. And interestingly, for the whole Hull and superstructure, they're saying C plus 5% B. So that's dark C grey plus 5% white, so basically a light grey. But they're saying that across the whole range of the... That can't be right. That can't be right. So again, uh, as always with the trumpeter group of companies, you, you, you have to question um, whether that makes any sense or not. And, and quite often um, it, it doesn't. So I think a bit of research is needed around what these colours actually would have been um, and you know whether they changed during a career. Um, it doesn't tell you where to put the flag, um, so you, you've clearly got um, a jack staff um, at the stern, but it could well have been flown off the um, back of that um, main mast there. Um, there is no rigging plan either, so you're going to have to do your own research to understand the rigging between the four and main masts and, and the relation relationship to um, the, the funnels and, and, and support cords for the funnels and so on. Uh, so I imagine there's quite a bit of rigging given the age of this uh, vessel, um, but there's nothing referred to it in the instructions. So there we have it, that's the Hobby Boss um, pre-Dreadnought um, uh, Condorcet. Uh, what's my first impression? Okay, I have a number of Hobby Boss kits. Um, the Seidelitz um, had some bits in it that I went, wow, that's nice. Um, their 1200 Mikasa is an absolutely stunning kit, totally beautiful kit. Um, of a really really stunning subject um, when it comes to this there's nothing in here that's blowing me away it's fairly standard it, it, it's just a stock ship kit having said that the subject matter I think makes it the, the thing that's interesting you're getting eight twin turrets five smokestacks um, a pre-dreadnought look looking ship you know a, it, the subject matter is really interesting. Unfortunately, um, Hobby Boss, I think, have undersold it a little bit. Uh, you know, there's there's areas where there could have been a little bit more detail. And it's a real shame that the aftermarket guys haven't gone, actually, we could do something with this. Um, you only have to look at this picture to see, you know, the, the opportunities there are here for um, hand rungs and, and various other bits and pieces and, and, and this complex rigging here with with all the various different um, um, shrouds and tarpaulins and bits and pieces there's lots and lots could be done with this and and so at the moment you're limited to an out of the box build of this um, the sister ship the Danton has a small um, photo etch set coming from a very tiny company I think it's their own only the second photo etch set they've done for a ship um, and it basically covers off um, some um, deck around the the, the um, command structure, the, the forward superstructure, and and doors around these windows, and and that's pretty much it. It doesn't cover anything else. Um, and master have a set of alumin turned aluminium and brass barrels, which um, you could fit to this kit. Um, what I'd say is that the plastic parts are made well, um, I'm sure the fit will be good, um, but it, it, it's, there's nothing there that's going to make you go, wow, I, I've definitely got to get this. There's nothing, there's no, there's nothing there that's, that's any different to any other ship kit. 
um, and in a couple of areas you think well actually you could have gone a little bit further with that um, having said that this retails you can pick these up for around about 35 40 pounds if you look around so actually you're getting quite a bit of kit for your money um, and I think once painted up if you go with the, the green anti-fouling underhull you've got something that looks a bit different than, than a lot of the other ships that you, you may have built so yeah uh, definitely worth looking at um, my experience of hobby bosses they go together well um, the, the quality of the parts is good um, the instructions are, are, are clear so yeah not a bad kit all in all there you have it Okay, take care everybody and I hope to see you all soon.